If you're going to be a serious grown-up person and appear to defend the Catholic Church in public in front of an educated and literate audience, you simply have to start by making a great number of heartfelt apologies and requests for contrition and forgiveness. Bishop Marini directly said, given the number of sins we've committed in the course of 20 centuries, reference to them must necessarily be rather summary. Right, I'll have to be summary too. His Holiness on that occasion, it was March the 12th, 2000, if you wish to look it up, begged forgiveness for, among some other things, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the persecution of the Jewish people, injustice towards women, that's half the human race right there, <laughs> and the forced conversion of indigenous peoples, especially in South America. Um, it followed no less than 94, 94 count them, uh, public recognitions on his part of appalling crime and error and cruelty and stupidity and offenses to the free intelligence, ranging from, I shall be summary, like Bishop Marini, the African slave trade, apologized for in 1995, the admission that Galileo was right <laughs> about the relationship between the sun and the earth and other orbs, which came in 1992, one might add, no, I won't say, it's too easy to say better late than never, here, I said it. <laughs> to violence and torture, legalized torture. Torture was legalized and institutionalized by the Roman pontiff during the Counter-Reformation. That came in 1995. Um, and for silence during Hitler's final solution, or Shoah, as well as in 1999 coming in just under the Millennium Jubilee wire, an apology for the burning alive in the main square of Prague of the great Czech Protestant Jan Hus. Um, since that big fiesta of forgiveness that uh, began in, uh, well, culminated, I might say, in 2000, fiesta of forgiveness, fiesta of asking for it, the papacy is also asked to be forgiven for the sack of Constantinople and the massacre of Byzantine Christianity in April 1204 as part of the Fourth Crusade, the anathema on all Eastern Orthodox Christians as unbelievers, heretics, and people dwelling outside the health of the church was lifted only in 1964. I call your attention to that. He also expressed sorrow about the murder and forced conversion of Serbian Orthodox Christians in the Balkans during the Second World War. And it doesn't end there. There are smaller but significant, um, equally significant, avowals of a very bad conscience. These have included uh, regret for the, and the torture of orphans and other children in church-run schools in almost every country on earth from Ireland to Australia. And I'm pleased to see that due reconsideration is now being given and may in fact have been given to the hellish, I choose the word carefully, doctrine of limbo, St. Augustine's uh, cruel and stupid disposal problem, solution to a non-existent problem, that is to say, the destination of the souls of unbaptized children. Up until now, Catholic parents have been taught that's where their unbaptized children went, a form of torture that's sometimes worse than the physical. Now it seems that this piece of Augustinian sadism is undergoing reconsideration as well. Uh, Joseph Ratzinger, the current pope, considered by some, by Catholics, to be the vicar of Christ on earth, says of Indians, the, of the Indians who were massacred in the course of conversion in Brazil, after the apology had been made to them, he said, nonetheless, it must be remembered that before we came to convert them, they were silently awaiting the arrival of the church. I don't think that's a very genuine kind of apology to you. I'd also want, I really think I would beg forgiveness for this. I don't think the German church should have asked Hitler's birthday to be celebrated from the pulpit every year until he died. These are very serious matters, and they're not to be laughed off by references to the occasional work of Catholic charities.